Hello YouTube. In this video, we're going to be talking about Olympic weightlifting. Now, I've never really touched the topic on this channel because it's a strength sport, it's a performance-based sport, and therefore, it has nothing to do with bodybuilding. And yet, I have many people who have asked me my opinion about the matter. And it's not that they just want to hear if I like the sport or not, to which the answer is yes, I actually love that sport. But rather, what they want to know is whether or not it is possible to achieve the physique of an Olympic weightlifter naturally. And that is very interesting, it's a very good question, and therefore I've decided to make a video about that, where well, we're going to try and answer that question. And to do that, we're going to have to look at only lifts from an hypertrophic standpoint, because any lift you do in reality could be one that is good for hypertrophy. And as a bodybuilder, as someone who's interested in physique and aesthetics, you should always have an open mind. You should always look at lifts and think, okay, this is done by someone who is not into bodybuilding, but maybe there is a chance that it might be good for muscle growth. And so you have to be curious and smart enough to be able to dissect the lift. So that's what I'm going to be doing for you guys today. And um, I understand perfectly also why people have that obsession and aspiration with only lifting and the physiques of these athletes because out of any strength athlete, I believe that they have the most aesthetic and pleasing physiques. And it's saying a lot because I do think also that some powerlifters, some strongmen even have good physiques. But I think that only lifters trump them all. And across the board, it's widespread. It's a belief that many people share because many people look at them and, and say, wow, I want to look like this. This is a look that I could see myself rocking and I wonder if it's possible. Could I actually achieve that? So let, let's see together. Let's discuss that very notion because you're going to understand that we're going to have to unveil a lot of things. I'm going to debunk some myths and we're going to actually get to a resolution because by the end of the video, I'm going to have a solid answer to give you. But first and foremost, let us discuss the very aesthetic of Oli lifters. Why do they look so good? I've personally found that when people say they want to look like an Oli lifter, they usually mean certain weight classes, and these tend to be the ones that are between 160 and 190 pounds, rarely higher, because the super heavy weights tend to be a bit fatter, they tend to not have the most aesthetic looking physiques, and the six packs, the cap shoulders, all of that is really contained within certain classes. But that's what makes them so enticing in many people's eyes, because they look at the guy and they say, okay, he's 170, like he's not a 260 pounds freak bodybuilder, so clearly this is within my reach. I should be able to get to that level, he's not super heavy, he has lean mass, a ton of it, but not to a level that is completely impossible for a natural athlete. And you would be correct. The reason why they look so good is because certain areas of the body are very developed. For example, the core. When you look at an oily lifter like the Chinese guys, a lot of people focus on their six-pack because they have massively developed cores. They look at their shoulders, they look at the upper back. These are the areas that people look at because they are very muscular. And so, for you to develop these areas, you could think to yourself, okay, they did that by doing only lifting. So clearly, if I do it too, I'm going to get the same result. Of course, that is quite the naive statement, and it's not that easy. And you're going to understand exactly why. So, you see that aesthetic physique, and you want to achieve it. But you have to keep in mind one thing. The guys that get to that level of muscularity were not aiming for that in the first place. It was not their goal. It was never their goal. At no point did they wake up thinking, okay, I'm going to train because I want to look better. No, they just ended up looking like this as a byproduct of their performance, okay? Keep in mind that the guys that you look at, especially the Chinese and the Eastern athletes, start from a very young age and never in their entire life has their coach focused on physique. Or aesthetics. It, it, is, it is never something that is in the question. It's, it's never something that occupies their thoughts. They end up looking like that because the way they develop in terms of functionality leads them to look like that. 
So for you, thinking you're going to be able to take the path of function to lead to form is a malpropism. You're not going to be able to do that because they themselves did not think like this. At no point was the clean and jerk or the snatch put in place to look better. It was always for performance. So it's something you're going to have to separate yourself from because a lot of people have that mindset. I still don't understand why. They look at an athlete and they say, okay, if I want to look like him, I need to replicate his performance, aka his lifts. How realistic do you think that is? Do you think that you're going to be able to replicate the lift of a Chinese champion in weightlifting? Of course not. You won't even come close to it. But you don't have to. That's a beautiful thing. All of the people who tell you, oh, this powerlifter has a 700 pound deadlift and a big back. So if you want a big back, get a 700 pound deadlift. Well, no, that's nonsense. That powerlifter could have had a bigger back with a smaller deadlift and you don't need to reach that deadlift to have a big back. Your performance is going to be your own. It's separated from others. And on top of that, the lifts that only lifters perform are not really the reason why they look like this. What I mean by that is that many of the early lifters you look at and you think look amazing do so because they are on drugs. I know it's not something people like to hear. I'm not saying that to put them down or to say they don't deserve their medals because at the end of the day, drugs are part of the sport now. Rather, I say that to make you understand that the reason why they're so aesthetic is not directly linked to their regimen. A lot of that is the drugs. And if you don't believe me, go back 20, 30 years at a time where people still use drugs in early lifting. Some would even argue they used more drugs and look at the physics. There is a clear evolution in the way the athletes look. Now, I'm not a chemist. I'm not going to be able to explain to you why exactly, but I can tell you for a fact that these guys would not look like that without certain supplements that they take to perform better. But again, keep in mind, the reason why they take the supplements is not to look good. It's to perform better, to be stronger, etc. And yet, I say that I don't want to discourage you because I still believe that the shape of the Oli lifter is achievable even without drugs. But again, not by the methods that you think are going to be put in place because you will not be doing Oli lifting to look like an Olympic weightlifter you will still utilize some of the methods because at the end of the day, again, they look like that and their shape is so specific to their sport because the lifts they do develop their body a certain way. I do think that only lifters are so enticing and appealing to the eye because the lifts they do develop certain areas of the body and not others. And some people respond very well to that. In an only lifter, as I said, you will find that they tend to have a weak point, quote unquote, when it comes to the chest and a strong point when it comes to the shoulder, which makes a ton of sense, they do a ton of vertical press and almost no horizontal press. They have a very, very developed uh, upper back and lower back because they do a ton of pulls and they need a lot of thoracic extension and rigidity in this area. They have very well developed quads. The posterior chain is developed, especially the glutes because they're athletes. So of course, their necks tend to also be big from all of the pulls. So they have a physique that on paper, some bodybuilders would say is not balanced, but that many would actually pick over other bodybuilders' physiques. And yet, the lifts that they do to achieve said physiques really are not the best for hypertrophy, meaning that they still work, because again, just because you take drugs doesn't mean that you're going to look like one of these Chinese Greek gods, but if you just espouse the lifts, exactly the way they do it, you're going to turn into an Olympic weightlifter, but you won't be looking like them, not even close. And so we have to find another way around that. Because in terms of hypertrophy, if I were to rank the lifts, I would put the snatch and the clean and jerk at the very bottom. And uh, it might be hard to hear for some people because you have an attachment to the lift, but understand one thing, those lifts were never put in place to test muscularity. It's, they're not there to, to be as effective as possible in terms of destroying muscle fibers. The goal was to have lifts that are easy to judge and that are a clear demonstration of power. That's, that's what they do, okay? And it 
also means that they were never intended to be good for bodybuilding. That should make a ton of sense. So, for the people who love the lift, and for the people who might like them from an aesthetic standpoint, but who don't understand why they're so bad for hypertrophy, let me tell you exactly why. First off, they're explosive. And the issue with that is that if you look at an early lifter, a lot of the time within the lift, they're not in control of the bar. Not that they're just throwing it out and just praying that it lands what they want. They are in total control of the trajectory of the bar. But to be able to be a good explosive lifter, you have to renounce control at some point, use the energy and the power output that you actually transfer into the bar and toss it send the bar, right? Sometimes, you, if you look in slow-mo, the only lifter is touching the bar, he maintains contact with the bar, but he's not holding it. That's what I mean. He's not actually resisting the weight. He's tossing the weight in a manner that allows him to catch it at some point and then explode up again to get in position to finish the lift. That is true, for example, for the clean and jerk. When you look at the guy, when he's positioning the bar on the front rack, He's not keeping contact with his hands. At some point, the bar is flying. And he is the one who is diving underneath the bar to catch it. Once it's caught, he explodes back up with the strength of his legs. But all of that time while the bar was not on him is time wasted. Because as a bodybuilder, you want to be in control of the bar. Because the bar will put you through damage that makes the muscle bigger. Only lifters dodge that altogether because... It's energy wasted. You don't want to do that. You want to be efficient for performance. So that's already a big problem. The explosivity of the lift means that if you do it properly, you're not going to get as much benefit in terms of hypertrophy. And that links directly to the absence of a negative as well. Because if you look again at those lifts, they're positive only lifts, save for a few exceptions. For example, again, the clean and jerk, if you look at the down motion of the front squat, technically it's not really a negative because the weight is again flying. The oil lifter catches the bar at the bottom. He's not traveling down with the bar on his collarbone, so it's not a weighted front squat. It becomes a positive front squat weighted once he's caught the bar and he's getting back up. For a bodybuilder, if you just follow that principle, now you just remove the portion of the lift that is the best for hypertrophy. So it's really a waste of time. Again, they do it because that's how they lift the most weight. But for us, it's not a good thing. And it's the same for when the clean and jerk occurs and he is jerking the bar above his head. He's not doing a negative afterwards. He's just letting the bar slam on his collarbones. Or most of the time, they don't even do that. They just slam it on the ground. So the down portion of the vertical press that is the most important for hypertrophy also is removed. Same for the snatch. It's the same logic. It's always tailored towards getting the weight up, but never in the, uh, the idea of creating a repetition of movements because, and that's another thing, it's usually low reps because when you compete in only lifting, it's one rep. And it doesn't mean that they don't do rep in their training, but if you look at their snatch and clean and jerks, you will rarely have an Oli lifter who has programmed 15 snatches in a row without any reset because it just doesn't really carry over to their sport. Problem is, that's how you bodybuild. It's through reps. So not only are the lifts by themselves, the biomechanics of the lifts, not suitable for bodybuilding, but even the practice and application of the lifts are not good. And I could continue on and on with that. Again, look at the joke. What is the joke? The joke is a press that you are boosting with your legs. You're bending at the knee and you're exploding back up. And it might sound silly, but some people don't get that just because you lift more weight that way doesn't make it better for the shoulders. Because if anything, you're deloading the shoulders. I know people who don't grasp that and who think, oh, when I bend at the knee, I can lift more weight on the overhead press. So it must mean that it's going to make my shoulders bigger. Well, no, it's the exact opposite. Because now you're sharing the work between the shoulder and the legs. And look at what you do with the legs. You do a small flexion of the knee that doesn't count as a negative. Then you explode. It's an explosive power centric movement. It's not good for bodybuilding. So for all of the people who wanted to do these movements to look like Olympic weightlifters, I'm sorry to say that it's not going to work. 
not only because one, they don't look the way they look just because of the leaves they do, and two, because the leaves by themselves are not effective to build the type of muscle that you think it will build. It will make you very powerful, there's no question about that, but if you're on this channel and if the question is, can I look like them, then you're going about it the wrong way. On top of that, they're also very technical, and that is not a good thing. Bodybuilders don't want to waste time developing techniques for lifts that are not good for hypertrophy. What is the point? If you develop your ability to do the bench press or the dip, that's a good idea because you're going to keep doing that movement that is good for the hypertrophy of the chest and the triceps and the shoulders. But in these cases, you are putting a lot of points and energy into lifts that are subpar. There is really no reason to do that. If you're interested in a talk about technicality and what I call the technical rating of a lift, I suggest you check the description. It's a topic I discussed in a video dedicated to that and also a video about uh, Olympic rings because it's really the same thing. Olympic sports tend to be extremely technique based and therefore it is always a bad idea to follow the exact practice of these athletes because they spent years refining their techniques. If you love Olympic weightlifting, you already know that. Look at the Chinese. They spend, I think, two to three years when they get started just working technique. They barely load. And once the technique is pristine, they load. Why? Because they perfectly understand that technique is the most important thing in their sport, not in bodybuilding. You won't spend three years learning how to curl. You will spend 10 minutes and then you'll curl because that's what makes the most sense for hypertrophy. We can't waste our time being super technical all the time. And every technical lift you have in your program is an investment and it better pay back in hypertrophy. If it doesn't, again, you just wasted your time. So it's a bad investment for bodybuilders. And it's the body's investment is twofold in reality. One, you're going to take a ton of time developing a technical lift and technical skill, like for example, the snatch, that again, takes maybe a year to get down to and then to perform and perfect psh, many, many years. Ask any Oli lifter and they'll answer to you that the snatch and the clean jerk take a lot of time to master. And on top of that, these are very jealous lifts because you need to program them constantly in your training so that you don't detrain on them because the higher the technical rating of a lift is, the faster you lose that rating and you lose that ability to perform the lift. And if you cannot perform the lift, you cannot damage the muscle. And so look at what I just presented to you. It's a vicious circle. You spent a lot of time training a lift that is bad for hypertrophy, a lift that forces you then to do it every single week or else it detrains and it becomes even worse for hypertrophy because you cannot lift the maximal amount of weight. Across the board, it is simply not something that is suitable for bodybuilding. So I'm not going to keep talking about the clean jerk and the snatch because you won't be able to do these lifts and get muscular with them unless you are again willing to become an Olympic weightlifter in, in, in which case uh, I don't really have anything to say to you because I only talk about bodybuilding. And that, just a little an, an aparté, is also true for strength. There, there is a large portion of the strength building community, especially the athletics department, that has themselves convinced that Olympic weightlifting is, is the cure and the key to everything. And as much as I love the sport, I believe that this is nonsense. If you look at the department of athletics again, and the type of training that athletes in different sports tend to receive to develop their power, you see a ton of people doing clean and jerks. And it's true for football, sometimes for basketball, even for rugby in certain countries. And as shocking as this might sound to some, I personally believe that this is really counterproductive for the same reason I already outlined. It's too technical of a lift. And the proof of that is, look at 100 football players do a clean and jerk, you're going to cringe because their position is terrible, their front rack is terrible, they catch with their elbows, their wrist is maximal flexion. They're basically doing a front squat with their wrist like this, which is not good for your arm. And the problem is that they also do one rep maxes because they have to establish a new record. And a lot of people end up believing that this is a good way to develop their power output on the field. And that to me is simply not correct. One, again, because 
they need to put time to develop a skill that they don't really want to develop, so their technique is shit. Therefore, they don't really develop the muscles that they should because the structure takes over the muscle. And on top of that, they do it for one rep max, which is not the best to develop the type of muscle and endurance muscle they need. For those who think that you're going to make a, a guy, a running back, sprint faster or cut faster because he can clean and jerk, that's, that's fairy tale land. That's nonsense. And a lot of coaches are starting to catch up on this and are developing other resistance training methods that are going to, down the line, be less injury prone and develop better athletes. I think that the reason why so many coaches are still in love with the clean and jerk is because Olympic weightlifting is a very respectable, venerable and ancient sport. And at some point, back in the days, it was the only thing they knew. If you told someone I lift weight, they would tell you, oh, just like these guys above head, in certain countries in Europe, it's still the only thing they know because it's in the Olympics. And so since it was the only reference available, a lot of coaches thought, hmm, I want to develop strength in my athletes. Olympic weightlifters are strong, so I'm going to make them do only lifting. But the funny thing is that you never see them program snatches for their athletes. Why? Because I believe that the technical rating for the snatch is so high and the amount of balance required is so tremendous that it's just a little bit too much. And the problem with the clean and jerk is that you can really be a complete asshole with the clean and jerk and just brute force your way through it and get it up. Meanwhile, the snatch is not as forgiving, which should have been a clear sign that the technical rating was too high on these lifts and that it would have been better to do something else. And yet you still have coaches who have their athletes do that. So, I'm not a powerlifter. If powerlifters want to disagree on the channel, you can. If athletes want to tell me that the, the clean and jerk is the, the best friend in terms of developing their athleticism, good for you. It's just something that I've noticed myself training for sports. And so, that's, I'll, leave you, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But for bodybuilding, it clearly is not a good option and a good thing to pursue. So, what do we do instead? Am I going to have you just do curls and bench press to look like an Oli lifter? No, because the patterns they espouse are still the reason why their muscles are shaped in that fashion with those imbalances that make you like their physique. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to find options to make the lifts easier in terms of technicality and harder in terms of muscularity. And how do we do that? There are two methods. One, what I call the de-hybridization of a lift. So we're going to take a lift and we're going to separate it in parts that make most sense. For example, we take the clean and jerk. What is the clean and jerk? It's a, a, a pull from the floor, followed by a front squat, followed by a press. Instead of doing that, which requires too much technique, we're going to de-hybridize it. We're going to separate these three entities. We're going to keep the pull, we're going to keep the squat, and we're going to keep the press. This is nothing crazy. I'm not the first person who invented that, but it's what makes the most sense for us in terms of programming. So you're going to want to do an overhead press, a knee flexion, if possible, a front squat, but you don't have to, as I already explained in the past. Front squat might not be the best option for bodybuilders. Again, too technical. It's in the description if you're interested. And we're going to do a pull. Just like that, you have made a better choice. And yes, it might not be as time efficient, but in terms of hypertrophy, it is five times better. There's no comparison. And the other way that we can go about doing that is to cut the range of motion. Because some of these lifts require a ton of mobility and of robust mobility at the bottom of the lift times and times again to be stable. It's not needed for bodybuilding. So what you can do is cut the range of motion. For example, you can do a power clean. A power clean means that you're not going to go all the way at the bottom to catch the clean. It's a power clean. You won't use as much weight, but it reduces the technicality. So that's for all of the people who are in love with the lifts and they really want to do them. They want to be authentic. No problem with that. It won't be your bread and butter. But if you don't just want to stick to the de-hybridization strategy, you can still do your snatches and your clean and jerks, but we're going to bastardize them. So you're going to do your power cleans, maybe from a rack, so that you don't have to actually go through all of the range of motion at the bottom. And you can do your snatches as well. But instead of doing four snatches, what you could be doing is, again, a snatch grip deadlift. 
you get all of the benefits from the pool for the posterior chain, and you just don't have to put the bar, the, the bar overhead. Or if you want to put it overhead to develop the shoulders and the upper back more, we can have you do that from blocks, so that you, again, don't have to do into so much flexion, and it's easier to put overhead as well with less weight. But keep in mind that this is for the people who are in love with the lifts. For those who don't want to have to do that and just want the physique, as I told you, we can just look at the lifts and separate the portions that we want and we keep them. And that is something that I personally do in my training. I do a ton of snatch grip deadlifts. I do a ton of snatch grip stuffs. Why? Because I recognize that that wide grip is excellent for upper back development. But I don't want to have to put the bar overhead. So what do I do? I just don't do it. It's as simple as that. And many people already do that. But I wanted to introduce that notion for those that maybe didn't really grasp that concept yet. Because to look like an Olympic weightlifter, you don't need to train like one. I know shocking, it's what I've been preaching in this video. So to the question, can you look like an Oli lifter naturally? The answer is yes. You might not be as lean or as muscular as they are at their body weight, but you can look similar to them. But the pathway to that is not going to be only lifting, it's going to be different. I know that now we have the great clown Jeff Cavalier telling people that to train like an athlete, you need to, sorry, to look like an athlete, you need to train like an athlete. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because, one, athletes don't look the way they do because they want to, it's a byproduct of their athleticism and their practice. And two, it makes absolutely no sense to pursue function for the goal of form. No sense. Tell yourself that. It is idiotic. You cannot chase performance to obtain aesthetics. It's going to be such a waste of time. It's like people who ask me, how do I look like a swimmer? Well, there are two answers to that. Either you become a swimmer or you just live so that you develop the muscles that swimmers develop, which would take five, five, le uh, five times less time because it's so much easier to isolate the hypertrophic benefits of movement patterns than to just do them for performance and then just hope that the byproduct makes you big. So don't fall for these traps and these gimmicks. If you're an athlete, good for you. You'll, you look the way you look. If you're not, if you're a bodybuilder, be smart. Look at what the athlete does and take only what matters and just throw the rest away. Put it in the garbage. You don't need it. They need it for performance, but you for aesthetic, it's just not required. So in conclusion, only lifts are bad for hypertrophy, but the good news is that you can get the same type of muscular development without them because for us, function simply doesn't really matter. And that leads me to the idea of a program based off of Olympic weightlifting that is not technically an only lifting program. It's going to be a pure bodybuilding program focused on the idea of looking like an only lifter without lifting like one. Let me know in the comments if that's something that would interest you. I would be happy to craft that for you guys. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.